We might think of the Persian Empire as ancient history, but the Qajar dynasty ruled Persia during World War I. The ancient Persian Empire is famous, and almost everyone has heard of their might. Although Alexander the Great conquered the ancient Persian Empire, he did not ultimately defeat them. The Persians lived on and rose again as the Parthians and the Sassanids to fight the Romans and the Byzantines, respectively. The Parthians were so powerful that they were one of Rome's greatest enemies. However, few people know what happened to the Persians after the fall of Constantinople. Other dynasties rose and ruled the Persian people, and two of the most impactful were the Afsharid and Qajar dynasties. They led Persia into the modern age and helped shape it into the modern country of Iran. The Persian Empire is part of our world today and is still working through the legacies of the Afsharid and Qajar dynasties. What was the Afsharid dynasty? The Afsharid dynasty took over Persia in 1736 under Nader Shah, a great military general. Nader Shah, also known as Nader Afshar, won significant territories for the Safavid dynasty, including Isfahan and much of northwestern Persia. However, the Safavid leader was not nearly as accomplished or talented a general as Nader, and he lost all of the lands Nader had conquered to the Ottoman Empire. Naturally, this infuriated Nader, and he forced the leader to abdicate the throne to his infant son, Abbas III. Abbas needed a regent, and Nader Afshar took over that position. Nader quickly turned his attention back to the Ottomans and pushed them out of Persian territory, and by 1735, the two empires had agreed to a peace treaty. Persia had been in chaos, but Nader brought the empire back and established stability again. He used his popularity and victories to depose the infant ruler and take the throne for himself as the new Shah, establishing the Afsharid dynasty. Although many Iranians today viewed Nader as a national hero, his government was filled with cruelty. His constant wars depleted the treasury, and Nader remained focused on gaining power and wealth for himself. He raised heavy taxes and set the death penalty on anyone who did not pay. Although his invasions of the Mughal Empire did bring wealth into the Persian Empire, Nader kept most of it for himself and did not truly take care of the Persians. As Nader's government grew, he became increasingly paranoid. Soon, he attacked and killed anyone he suspected of treason. As the pressure mounted, people across the empire rebelled, and he became increasingly occupied with putting down the rebellions. Nader's health continued to deteriorate, and his paranoia worsened. He even blinded one of his sons because he suspected he was part of an attempt on Nader's life but his son's involvement was never proven. In 1747, Nader became suspicious of his Persian military commanders. They discovered his plans, and lest he should kill them like he had killed so many others, they assassinated him in his tent. Nader is praised today for his work stabilizing the Persian Empire and building a navy fleet from scratch for his campaigns. He was dedicated to amassing power, which led to Persian expansion. However, he was also a harsh ruler who cared little for the needs of his people it allowed his paranoia to affect internal decision-making. Nader's death led to a time of disorder in the Persian Empire. Nader had left no chosen heir, leading to instability. Immediately after Nader's death, his two nephews took the throne, but they were both killed quickly. Shirok Shah was the last member of the Afsharid dynasty. He was Nader's grandson and took the throne in 1748, although he was deposed in 1749. Shirok did retake the throne later, but he only ruled a section of the Persian Empire called Khorasan. The rest of the Persian Empire remained in disarray until 1751, when Karim Khan began gaining power. He was the leader of the Zan tribe. The tribe was Kurdish and originated from west-central Iran. Karim defeated the other tribal leaders and became the leader of most of Persia by 1760. Although he claimed to be Vakil Arayaya, which translates as regent of the people, his rule was undisputed everywhere except Khorasan. Karim Khan ruled the Persian Empire for about 28 years. His reign was markedly different from Nadir Shah's. Karim led kindly, which was distinct from his contemporaries. He lowered taxes, promoted peace, and even treated his enemies well by keeping them alive and using their leaders as advisors. Karim Khan gave Persia time to heal from the decades of chaos and war, although he did fight the Ottomans in 1775. Although Karim was able to provide some stability to Persia, he could not completely reverse the empire's slow decline. The Afsharid dynasty was generally unstable, and the Persian Empire began to fall behind the growing European powers. Sadly, Karim's peaceful rule was not meant to last. 
Upon Karim's death in 1779, the Persian Empire descended into civil war. The Zan tribe attempted to hold on to the throne, but they lacked the military and political skills to stand their ground, unlike Karim Khan. Instead, the Qajar tribe rose to power from northwest Iran, led by Aga Muhammad Khan. Aga had been one of Karim's hostages for years. Although he was well treated and given great respect, Aga still escaped and returned to his people after Karim's death. After consolidating his power over the Qajar tribe, Aga marched south, determined to take the whole empire and set up a new dynasty, the Qajar dynasty. Who was the Qajar dynasty? The Qajar dynasty came from the Qajar tribe, which started with hopes of returning the empire to greatness. The Afsharid dynasty and the chaos afterward had seen a steady decrease in Persian power overall, and people hoped that the Qajar leaders would be able to restore Persian might. The dynasty began with Aga Muhammad Khan, and he spent much of his reign defeating his internal enemies and solidifying his chain as Shah. He was trying to unify the empire to protect it from European colonization. However, Aga's reign was harsh. He announced himself as the Shah in 1789 and then focused on defeating the last Zand ruler and the last Afsharid ruler. He defeated Loft Ali Khan from the Zand tribe in 1794. After massacring the city, he blinded, tortured, and finally killed Loft to end any Zan claim to the throne. Aga also conquered Khorasan, where the last Afsharid, Shirok Shah, was still ruling. Aga also tortured Shirok to death, partially because he wanted Nadir's treasure, even though it was long gone. Aga's reign was brutal, but it was short. By 1796, almost all of Persia was reunified, but Aga was assassinated in 1797 by his servants before he could execute them for being too loud. However, Aga managed to secure a stable and lasting dynasty by choosing his heir before he died and limiting any rival claimants. Fath Ali Shah Qajar was Aga's nephew and had a relatively easy rise to the throne after Aga's death. Thus, the Qajar dynasty was stable, something the Afsharid dynasty had never achieved. Fath Ali focused on state building. He worked on reviving a national government, arts, and culture. His reign gave Persia internal peace and room for some economic recovery. However, Fath Ali did more than build a government and patronize poets. He also began pushing Persia to modernize, especially in the military. He was frustrated by the losses to Russia, so Fath Ali and his advisors worked to procure modern equipment and learn modern tactics. However, modernizing had the ambiguous effect of drawing the attention of Britain and Russia. Both countries wanted to use Persia as an international pawn, and as Persia began trading with them more extensively, the Persian economy actually slowed down. They needed to import so much, but they had little to export, which meant that money was constantly leaving the country while they were still recovering from the wars of the 18th century. When Fath Ali died in 1834, he named his grandson Muhammad Shah Qajar as his heir. However, Muhammad only took the throne because he had both Russian and British backing and the Persian people did not like him much. He increased trade with Britain in 1841, threatening to put any Iranian people out of business. Also, Persia had adopted a prime minister by this time, and Muhammad's choice for the position was unpopular, Muhammad's old tutor, who came from the Sufi branch of Islam. This branch focuses on mysticism, but is not a dominant branch. People felt Muhammad's policies were impacted as a result leading to civil unrest and some localized persecution against religious minorities like Jews and Christians. After Muhammad died, his son Nasser al-Din Shah Qajar took the throne, again with the help of Britain and Russia. His reign looked promising, primarily because he selected his tutor, Amir Kabir, as the prime minister. Nasser's early reign focused on reform and modernization. Even at a young age, Nasser knew that it was the only way to save his country, and Amir heavily influenced him. They reorganized the state budget, modernized the army, reorganized government administration, opened the first Persian university, started the first newspapers, and even vaccinated the population against smallpox. It seemed like Persia was finally stepping into the modern age. However, the elite often viewed reforms negatively, and the Russians and British were not fond of Amir, who refused to give either side concessions. The internal and external forces banded together to convince Nasser to exile and murder Amir in 1852. After Amir's death, the reforms slowed and eventually stopped. As a result, Persia was still not strong enough to break free from British and Russian influences, leaving it a pawn. 
instability began to grow again inside the Persian Empire as the government became more oppressive. The people rioted due to famine, cholera, and oppression, making the government react more violently. Although Nasser did visit Europe, he worried that instituting European governmental reforms would weaken his power, so he spent the last 20 years of his rule enforcing his power and enjoying hunting and women. His power came under attack as he balanced an increasingly destabilized Persia, the Russian expansion, and the British desire to stop Russian expansion. He was finally assassinated in 1896 by an Iranian revolutionary. After his death, the Qajar dynasty began to descend into obsoleteness. Nasser's heir was weak and more focused on rich living than on running a country. To stop the riots of 1902 and 1903, he formed a national assembly called the Majlis, but he died before he had to deal with them. His heir was Muhammad Ali Shah Qajar, who tried to abolish the Majlis and started a civil war in 1908. Muhammad also did not rule long. He was deposed in 1909 and left his son, Ahmad Shah Qajar, to lead. However, his son was underage, and because the civil war was still ongoing, the Majlis stepped up and formed the Iranian Gendarmerie with the help of American William Morgan Schuster. The Russians were not happy about this. They supported the Iranian Cossack Brigade, which they helped train. When the Majlis refused to send Schuster away, per Russia's demands, the local nobles revolted and ended the Majlis in December 1911. Ahmad Shah Qajar was still the Shah, but he was powerless to stem the chaos in his country. His lack of power was fully displayed during World War I. Persia claimed neutrality, but was invaded by the Russians, Ottomans, and the British. After the war, the British struck an agreement with Ahmad that made Persia a client state of the British Empire in 1919. The Persian people were united in their outrage about it and they staged a coup in 1921 led by Colonel Reza Khan and the Iranian Cossack Brigade. Reza became prime minister in 1923, and Ahmad Shah decided to take a long trip to Europe. Reza made the Majlis depose and exile the last Qajar ruler in 1925, officially ending the Qajar dynasty and taking the throne for himself. The Qajar dynasty took over Persia during a time of great civil unrest. They initially stabilized the country and even instituted some modernizing reforms. However, they lacked the strength and knowledge to carry out these reforms, while also dodging Western colonization and Russian expansion. The Qajar dynasty did not adapt to the times, and by the 1920s, they were obsolete, leaving Persia vulnerable to military takeovers and the new Pahlavi dynasty that pushed Iran into the country it is today. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends? and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Afsharid and Qajar dynasties, check out our book, The Afsharid and Qajar Dynasty, a captivating guide to two Iranian dynasties who ruled Persia from 1736 to 1925. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.